Hello, welcome to the Friday, December 10th, 2021 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Henry Jing today did publish an interesting blog post regarding some phishing messages on Discord. Of course, phishing tends to follow users to whatever messaging platform they're using. So no real surprise that they have now weaponized Discord as well. And this particular phishing attempt was a bit more on the sophisticated side. First of all, the username used within a Discord was security with a couple sort of sparkles at the end. But then they advertised free Nitro and offered a link that actually used the domain name discordgifts.1. So uh, something looking a little bit uh, plausible. If the user did reach the website that uh, they advertised they were then asked for billing information credit card data which appear to be sort of real the goal here to steal credit card information and then in the end the user was sort of left hanging with a 500 error also kind of interesting if you used the website without sort of the additional parts to the url that were posted to the channel you were just directed to the legitimate Discord a website and that of course again uh, then makes that entire uh, scam more plausible. They also in their domain name uh, sort of swap the CNS so Discord instead of Discord. Uh, guess they wanted to avoid some of the automated tools that Discord usually uses in order to find these phishing sites by for example looking for newly registered domains or certificate transparency logs. And Eclipsium, a company that specializes on firmware security, uh, did take a look at why MicroTik devices are still so commonly being exploited. Well, uh, the summary is, first of all, they're attractive. Uh, MicroTik, if you're not familiar with it, they're making switches and uh, routers, sort of for the enthusiast prosumer kind of market. So better than your standard home small business router. But then again, Again, sharing a lot of the same vulnerabilities and that of course makes them very attractive targets also enterprise in particular appear to have difficulties reining in these devices because they often lack some of the enterprise management features that would make inventorying them and patching them easier if you do have a MicroTech device, definitely make sure that you keep it up to date. And Eclipsium also created a little tool to sort of look for vulnerable devices in your environment and make sure that you're leaving some of the admin capability, in particular the Winbox protocol, which is sort of a MicroTech special, not exposed to the internet. And then we have an interesting new vulnerability in log4j. This allows remote code execution and no patch is available as of right now. Well, uh, there is sort of a patch in uh, GitHub, but no new stable version has been released yet. So Log4j is a framework for logging and it is used by numerous uh, services. And the problem here is if an attacker is sending data to a service and this data is then logged via Log4j, the attacker is able to get Log4j to reach out to an attacker's server, download additional Java classes that are then being injected into the server process. And with that, that arbitrary code is executed. Exploitation is in so far relatively straightforward and given that there are many well-known uh, servers that are using log4j for logging, it shouldn't be all that difficult uh, to find a vulnerability that is publicly exposed. And Oracle, for example, they're still, I think, patching older log4j vulnerabilities in their products. So as I'm recording this, uh, no patch is available, no official advisory from Log4j either, uh, but uh, researchers from Lunasec have put together a quick blog post that outlines the most important parts of this vulnerability, including some basic proof of concept code, how to exploit this vulnerability. 
As a workaround to mitigate this vulnerability, you may start your server with log4j to format message no lookup set to true. Or of course, there is the release candidate version available for log4j 2.15, which will fix the problem. But again, this is not an official stable release yet. In other patches, we also have updates available for SonicWall's SMA100 devices. These updates fix a number of different vulnerabilities. The highest CVSS score is 9.8 with an unauthenticated stack-based buffer overflow. There are also authenticated command injection vulnerabilities as root that are being addressed here. So essentially a privilege escalation vulnerability. And then an interesting sort of get bookmarks heap-based buffer overflow vulnerability with a CSS score of 8.8. Then I would like to congratulate our sans.edu Sentinels uh, National Cyber League teams. Out of about 4,000 teams, they placed in spots two and three. So well done, and the members of uh, the high-ranking teams also uh, got full scholarships to sans.edu. That's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.